Right, so this is the geek edition of Blake's video, his fat versus plus bike video. We took the two different bikes out, compared them, did some riding tests, did some really random tests as Blake does. So for this is more techie. We're gonna take a look at the technology that goes into these wheels and if the tech stuff does agree with what Blake thought. I'm gonna kick this one off with saying that a 2.6 tire is not officially a plus bike tire, Blake, so you got that one wrong. A plus tire is actually normally associated with anything between 2.8 inches and 3.5 inches wide. Fat is anything above four inches. However, I'm gonna let Blake off a little bit because 2.6 inch tires have recently come around from plus tires because people are realizing that there are some disadvantages that are with too big a tire. So actually 2.6 is getting much more common. I think that's just come around because of plus tires. So what are we calling these? Minus plus, smaller plus, I don't know. But I guess you could call it a plus tire, even though it's not officially. So let's have a look at the wheels to begin with. So the plus tires on Blake's Nuteproof Scouts are the 27.5 FSA grid wheels. So alloy rims, they've got 27 mil internal width. Now that's something we're seeing a lot more of recently as well. The sort of trend is going towards 30 mil internal width so that you get that nice profile of the tire. So that's wider than maybe two or three years ago. And again, the tires are wider as well. So you just get a nicer shape to that tire. And these weigh in at 1835 grams for the pair. So the plus size tires are on boost wheels, which means a 15 mil width front axle and a 110 mil width front hub. And on the rear, it's 12 mil axle on a 148. So wider than normal to give you that bracing angle of the spokes, therefore to give you a stiffer wheel. Now fat is a whole different thing. So these are massive. So it's a 150 mil wide front hub, again on a 15 mil through axle, so super wide. On the back, they're 197 mil wide, again, 12 mil through axle. So a few more stats about the fat wheels. These are the DT Swiss BR2250s, and just look at the size of them. That's 78 mil internal width on that rim. Four inch tire on here. Um, you can see the big cutouts as well. So there's a bit of rim tape inside there, but there's a tube in here, it's just much easier to fit a tube on a fat tire and actually the tubeless, you don't get that much of an advantage from. Whereas the plus size tires, they are set up as tubeless. Uh, and they actually weigh in at 2228 grams. So not that much heavier than the smaller wheels. Um, yeah, just a few hundred grams. These are 26 inch. That's pretty common to be fair for fat bike tires. You don't really find 27 and a half or 29 for these things, uh, but it's a big old wheel. So we've ridden fat bikes a lot here at GMBN and talked about them quite a lot as well. So originally they were designed for snow and sand, sort of the most extreme weather conditions, but actually now you see them much more commonly used on regular mountain bike trails. So the advantages of these tires is basically that sort of flotation. So it makes it possible to ride over snow and sand in the first place. But actually on normal trails, I wouldn't say it gives you suspension, but it just takes away some of that chatter of those smaller bumps. And you can also run these at super low pressure. So anything from five PSI up to about 15. One of the problems for people like Blake especially who ride these things hard is you can start puncturing but also moving the tire around loads. So let's take a look at just how hard Blake has got these tires. I would imagine it's much higher than 15 psi. It's not 9 psi. That's surprising. 9 psi is surprising but it feels much harder than that. You can't actually push it in that much. It's just such a huge volume tire. And this is only a four inch tire, so it's pretty much the limit on the smaller side of fat bike tires. They can go up to five inch tires, these things. So now it's the plus size tire, which is definitely more than nine PSI. I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna say 22. 19. That's not too bad. Uh, still fairly soft though, to be fair for Blake, especially. He's a big, clumsy bike rider. <laughs> so the theory goes that the bigger the tyre, the more comfort and more grip you're gonna have. And Blake did find that, to be fair. But the disadvantages of that, so the bigger tyre, is more sidewall flex, which means the tyre's just gonna move around quite a lot. So that's where you do have to up the pressures to stop yourself from puncturing or even ripping that tyre off the rim. And we have seen that in the past with plus size tyres, trying to ride them really aggressively on enduro. 
they can be a little bit too lightweight and that's why actually we've seen the rise of these 2.6 inch tires that are tougher, stronger tires to deal with that basically. But when it does come to suspension, I think it really works for taking out those smaller bumps, so tiny little stones and roots in the trail. I think that's showed on some of the tests we've done previously. So on our Fat Bikes Fast, that video, I rode the bike on quite a sort of bumpy, choppy trail and it felt like I was riding a magic car park. I could just keep pedaling over those little bumps and it did actually seem super fast and it showed on the clock as well. So all that stuff is nice in theory, but let's try and put some science behind this. I've got some Perspex here and I'm actually gonna try and see how big a tire footprint there is. So going from plus to fat bike can actually measure the difference of how much tire is touching the floor at any time. Now more like that. Six knobs. So check it out. We've just put a decent amount of pressure through this Perspex onto the tire. You can see the fat tire, that's probably not quite as big as I'd expect. Like Blake said, most of the time if you're riding upright, you're not actually using the sides of the tire that much. You're still kind of sat in the middle. But I reckon that's about a third more contact on the ground. But one of the big differences on the plus tire, you've actually got nine knobs touching the floor pretty much at any point and they are deeper, so nine aggressive knobs. You know what aggressive knob is? Well, that's gonna give you grip on a tire for one. But with the fat tire, you've only got six of those knobs touching the floor at any point. So that sort of stands up to what I think about it as well a little bit. I find that fat tires, um, when you're talking about riding anything where it's loamy or mud, you do float and you don't dig in very well. And um, you've, because you've got three less knobs touching the ground probably at any one point, you're just not gonna dig into that dirt quite as well. Plus, you've got that higher surface area as well, which does mean a bit more float. When it comes to actual weights, by the time you've got a rotor, a tire, and a tube, the fat bike wheels are 600 grams each heavier, so 1.2 kilograms. And of course, we're talking about rotating mass there, so that does make a big difference how the bike feels, but also that gyroscopic effect. So, so I've got this thing going to actually, whoa, okay, to actually get that thing moving around it takes quite a lot of effort. Give us a spin. It was actually now, the 2.6 feels much easier. So I've done a bounce test, it's not very scientific, but I dropped a wheel to see how high it would bounce. So starting from the same point, and actually that does show that the fat bike tire bounces marginally less. So that's the opposite of what Blake said, where it feels like it's a more bouncy wheel. Um, but I think actually, the reason it bounces less in my test is the more volume of the tire. So in that impact, that could be absorbed by that bigger tire, much wider, much deeper sidewalls. But there's no arguing the fact that when you ride these bikes, they do feel like you're sitting on that tractor seat. They do bounce around quite a lot. I think that, again, is down to the size of that sidewall. You know, that's probably three or four inches deep as well as wide. And it's not damped at all like I've talked about before. So as soon as you hit a bump, you start bouncing. You keep bouncing for quite a while, to be honest, with a fat bike tire. Something that's very difficult to measure is rolling resistance, especially when you're sat in a workshop. So let's get out and let's do it on the bikes. So this is gonna be a very simple rolling resistance test. So no pedaling whatsoever. I'll lean off against the wall, press start. And when I hit that brick down there, I'll stop my stopwatch. Ready, set, go. Eleven seconds, seventy-nine. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Eleven forty-six. <laughs> point two of a point two five a second faster on a fat bike. So the three tests, roll resistance, and the plus bike slower every time between zero point two five and zero point seven five of a second slower going from a really short one to a 20 second roll. So it's not actually as fast as fat bike, which is contrary to what Blake said. I think a lot of that is actually down to his tire tread being deeper and slower rolling. So try to put some science behind what Blake felt on the fat bike. And it's fair to say that our tests have not always agreed with Blake, but Blake still loves fat bikes, that won't change that. If you want to see that original video, click over there for that one. And if you want to see our fat bikes fast, really fun video, click over there for that one. So it's time to ride back to the office. Which one am I going to take? I reckon I'm taking the plus bike. I commuted to work on the fat bike this morning. You get some funny looks riding around town on it. So Tom, you'd have to ride that one back. Give us a thumbs up. It's like GMN Tech. <laughs>